Thank you so much. What, what was your stream about? Because it was about, you said Muhammad was in the Bible. Is that correct? You watched a couple of minutes. Yeah, I was watching um, John's um, God's Logic stream. So that's what I feel like you said. And we can talk about whether Muhammad's in the Bible or not. If that was your point. I, I feel like I watched it, but no, I... No, you, you didn't get my stream. You didn't get... What no, I didn't watch all of it, but I only yeah. saw a small part. And I believe that's what I heard. I could be incorrect. That's why I'm asking for. Oh, the, look, for me to go through an hour and a half presentation now. No, but you can summarize what the main point was. The point was to prove that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not deceived. Okay? So the revelation okay, yes. of the, so the Quran. Can we debate on that? Huh? Would we have to just have a discussion, debate, whatever on you that? You can discuss that. Okay. But the thing is, do you think that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was deceived? Is that your belief? Because if it's not, then there's no point in having a discussion on that. I can't for sure say, but if he, if he actually saw a entity manifest, then I would say he was deceived by that um, whatever I'm angel it not, was. I'm asking you what you believe, not the possibility. I'm saying, what is it that you believe? Do you believe he was a liar? Do you believe he was crazy? Do you believe he was deceived? I think, I think he was either deceived because I don't have the evidence or he was a liar. It's one of the two. Well, he can't have both. Yeah, you can. No, you can't have both. Why not? Because a liar willingly lies. A liar. He knows, he knows he's telling a lie. Someone who's a liar yeah. knows what he's saying is false. Someone who's deceived thinks he's, uh, he's telling the truth. Yeah, but, but he, can, he, can, he can do both. So he can be deceived by something, but he can also be a liar. And we can demonstrate that no. he, he was a liar. You can demonstrate that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was a liar. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's, okay. Because this, that argument reminds me of the argument that Hamza used to make. He, he, he was either deceived. I'm not interested. No, because that's what that, the stream that I did was the last segment of those three um, planes. Right, so. So, for example, I'm trying to trying to find the hadith, but I can just ask it. For example, do you believe Muhammad was illiterate? Yes. So, in the hadith, that's well known. Right. So, in the hadith, well, when he asked to get, have something written, what time? So right. right. So, my question would be, wait, let me. Yeah, but let me ask you a question. You said he cannot. He wasn't a liar. So, when he said, "Give me a pen." so I can write something for you. Uh -huh. He was either telling the truth or he was lying. No. So, do you, do, you, do you not understand what it means? Okay. See, this is the thing. You need to understand how the Arabs spoke. Mm. I say this a lot to, to people who critique 7th century uh, okay. um, sources. When someone says, bring me something so that I can write, right. okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to write it. Okay? It means that they want something written. Okay? We know that he, he never ever wrote, that he could never read. So him being, uh, it's not even him. Okay, Everyone so let's look at the hadith. It's, if it goes with what the context of what you're saying, that he was asking for a scribe or whether he was asking for himself. So it says, Ibn Abbas said, when the ailment of the you prophet... Don't need, you don't need to, no, because it's... No, the, I'll tell you why, because I've already told you yeah, but, that he said, bring me pen and paper. He didn't ask yeah, to, bring, but, to be brought a scribe, did Yeah, he? but let's see what the response from the Sahaba was as well. So if, whether it goes with what you're saying, because they would have understood, as you said, yes. there's a context to it. So let's see what their response is to yeah, see if they understood. Yeah, that's why I said, let me read it. So it says, Ibn Abbas said, when the ailment of the prophet became worse, he said, bring for me writing paper and I will write for you a statement after which you will not go astray. So you said that this can mean that a scribe can write it down. So it said, but Umar said, the prophet is seriously ill and we have got Allah's book with us and that is sufficient for us. But the companions of the prophet differed about this and there was a huge cry. On that, the prophet said to them, go away. It is not right that you should quarrel in front of me. Ibn Abbas came out saying, it was unfortunate that Allah's messenger was prevented from writing that statement for them because of their disagreement and noise. So it seems like Ibn Abbas 
seem to have to, they all seem to not be aware that all he was asking for is a scribe to write something down and they were disagreeing amongst themselves whether that scribe who's going to write something down for Muhammad should write it down. But it doesn't seem to fit with the context of this verse because they're clearly you're saying... Just reading it, you're just reading it as it is. Okay. But you're not understanding how the Arabs spoke. Okay. So, okay. so, the, so the underlying thing here... So did Ibn Abbas them. understood the Arabic? Uh, yes, of course. So yeah. what was his contention? So, no, so they respond in the same way that the Rasulullah So the way the Rasulullah was talking, they were talking the same way. So, yeah, why so when was he's the... asking to write and they're saying for him to write, they understand what is going on because they know he cannot read or write. So this exchange here is not saying that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is going to write. So what are the Sahaba disagreeing about? Disagreeing whether they should, they should allow something to be written. Does the Quran say, obey the Allah, obey the Messenger? Yes. So why would they disagree on a command from the Messenger? Well, they would ask questions and they, would, they wanted but, him to rest as well. Yeah, but again, the Quran says clearly from Allah, obey Allah, obey the Messenger. Yeah. So if he says to them, bring me something to write, He's either telling the truth, because you said he can't, he can only tell the truth or, be, or he was deceived. So I'm saying in that moment, if he's telling the truth, yeah, no, who are true. they when they, there's a clear Quran verse that says they have to obey his command? They disagree that he didn't even write anything. So I'm asking you, one, what were they disagreeing about and why did they disobey okay, so, no, his command? They, they didn't disobey. First and foremost, they didn't want to stress the Prophet, peace be upon him. Okay? They didn't want to stress him out, okay? Because he was already sick. But he asked them it for a command. Doesn't matter. But, but this, it's not for is, them this to do. This, this, this is not. If, 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 uh, yeah, but let me just. Let me okay, go on. Sorry. Let me finish the thought. So the prophets, uh, sorry, the companions, uh, they cared about the prophet, peace be upon him. Mm. They cared about his well-being. Right. They saw him that he was very sick. They didn't want to stress him out. They understood the responsibility. This wasn't disobedience. This was care for the prophet, peace be upon him. Okay. And they've questioned him before on other matters. They've asked him things. They've um, throughout, throughout uh, the message. That in and of itself is not disobedience. However, when he commanded them, okay, to leave him alone, they left. Okay. But what you're saying doesn't go with the text. That's exactly and what it says in the text. Because, okay? because at, he asked for So are you telling me... He asked. He asked for something to be written. Right. Okay. So how did they... So That's at, different to be... That's different to a command. So... Okay? But the, a command is asking some someone to do something. No. So no, if you no, say... No. Of course it is. No. There is something... Well, look. The Prophet Sallallahu he was a human like anyone else, okay? If he asks for something, right? It's like saying, oh, you know, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would ask other people for things. They wouldn't, and there would be examples where they wouldn't want to give it to him, okay? Because, just because he's the messenger of Allah. When wait, it comes to, wait, wait, when wait. When it comes to the wait. religious aspects. L let's roll it back. And let me get, say what your no, prophet no, 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 said. No, no. Hold on wait, wait, because you no, said. Because I want to bring it back to the actual claim that you're making. You yeah, said, this he is, lied. I, I, I asked. Well, in this, you're going no, off on a tangent. I Hold said on. in this statement. You're going off on a tangent. Yeah, but I said in this statement, was he telling the truth or telling the lie? He was and the claim, the truth. and this is the thing he said. Let me. That's why I feel like you're going off point. No, you're going off. He said, he said, bring forth for me a writing paper, and I will write I've for you this. a statement I've which you. This. Yeah, but wait which you will not go astray. Yeah. Now your response is that the Sahaba were caring for him. Yes. So therefore they are reject, they, they, they've ignored that he said, I will write something for you that you will not go astray. That if he got revelation from um, Jibreel, how do they know that he was not about to receive a revelation? If he hasn't even given, had the chance to communicate what he needs to communicate. So regardless, let me, I let you speak. So I'm just making my point. So I'm saying regardless of whether they were caring for him or not, if they understand that he received revelation, especially on his deathbed, and he's saying, I'm going to give you something which you will not go astray, the duty should be on them, especially when the Quran says, obey Allah, obey the messenger, to, even if it was, I, which I disagree, was for a scribe to write something down, they should have still brought the scribe to write down what he was about to say. That's got nothing to do with your claim. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Because your claim, mm -hmm. you're accusing the Prophet, peace be upon him, about lying, about being able to write. Right. Everything you just said has got nothing to do with that. It does. No. So I'll because go. Because the, 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 the point here is, because mm -hmm. you're trying to draw it from the fact that he said, I'm going to write something to you. Right. Which means that he's lying the thing is even then let's assume that you're correct okay if he says that i'm going to write something for you mm -hmm. and then he actually writes something mm -hmm. then he's not lying about writing something 
So then he wasn't illiterate? No, I'm saying if, if I took your argument for granted. Yeah, but that's okay. my point. So my no, point, yeah, but, but my point would be, if he could write something, then the claim that he was an illiterate prophet is false. Yeah, but that's, that's a, I'm giving you a hypothetical. I was like, even if I gave you that hypothetical, and then he proceeded to write, he just told them he's going to write something. Yeah, but okay. if you said to me, no, but he wouldn't have been able to write. No, I'm, what I'm telling you is that he was never able to write. Yeah, but and he was never able to read. Okay. Yeah, but this so is... this statement of that is understood by the Arabs. Right. Okay, that he was asking for uh, for something to be written. So why did the Sahaba? We go back to the point of why. Because you're making it to another different point. So that's why I'm addressing I'm that second it, I'm point. I'm not making it. I'm so addressing let, the point. Let me, okay. He cannot read or write. My, my so point one is this. Point one is, is that statement true or false that he could read or write? So if you said he could... He can't read or write. I know, I'm responding. Just so you get that. that I've, I've got your answer. So I'm saying, to elaborate on my argument, if he could write, you said... Um, so if he could write, then it would mean that the, if the Muslim claim that he was illiterate is false and he was no. truthful. Yeah, but let me finish no, my point. Yeah, but yeah, no, but, but, mis mis no, but I'm, my point. I, yeah, but respond no. after. I know I, I tried to refrain from cutting you off. So I'm trying to relay my point. So I'm saying my argument is this. If you say he was telling the truth, then the, he was truthful and that would validate your go with your point that he was truthful. But then that would also mean that Muslims would have to concede that he wasn't an illiterate prophet because, and that's a lie. If they say he couldn't uh, write, then that claim was a lie and then that disproves your initial presumption, your presumption to claim. Or if you're saying that in the Arabic context, that saying meant that you should bring a, me a scribe, I'm saying in the context of the Hadith, where they are disagreeing, it seems to go against what you're saying because they would have clearly understood that and brought someone to write something so they would not go astray as opposed to disagreeing and crying that you and then your prophet got frustrated and sent them away. No, so you missed it completely because in order, just because of the, the distress of the prophet because of his sickness, mm -hmm. they didn't even want him to speak. But, they didn't even want him to speak, right. okay? because of his ailment, mm -hmm. okay? So for, for the writing paper to be brought forward, he would have to speak so that it can be written down, okay? They understood this straight away because they know he cannot. So I'm going to drop the hypotheticals you don't because you don't understand him. I understand what you're saying. You, you missed the point completely. But so you, I'm saying what your hypotheticals don't go with the text. No, no, no. Because you, you're you, saying... No, you misunderstood what I was because saying. Look, let's just drop the hypothetical and it's still with the reality. All right. The reality is that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him never lied. Even Abu Jahl, okay? We, we've already yeah, but let's use this up. hadith as the this context. Hadith, I've because told you, you don't, know, you don't know what the hadith means. Yeah, because you're giving me an explanation which goes against what no, the hadith... It, it goes against your superficial reading of the hadith. No, but yes. I'm saying their actions... Okay, first of all, all right, hold on. Right. First and foremost, mm. I'll explain to you. First and foremost, you're reading the English. You're not even reading the Arabic text. Secondly, you have no knowledge of how the Arabs spoke in the seventh century okay. to be able to comment on that. Okay. Thirdly, it is well established in all Islamic literature, mm. Islamic literature that the Prophet peace be upon him um, was illiterate. But you said they were caring for him and you gave me... Yeah, they cared for him. They didn't even want him to speak. But if the Quran says obey the Prophet, obey yes, the messenger, they have point. to... Live. That's a different point. Why would they disagree That's though? a different point. Okay. Okay. We're discussing the, the point of was the Prophet peace be upon him alive. Now, the fifth point is that even his staunchest enemy, Abu Jahl, and you would see that if you watch the rest of the presentation, Abu Jahl, um, the night before Badr, okay, he was um, meeting with, a, with another disbeliever called Al Akhnas. And Al Akhnas said to him, Oh Abu Jahl, you know, there's no one from Quraysh here except me and you. Okay, so tell me about Muhammad. Uh, is he a truthful or is he a liar? And Abu Jahl, the strongest enemy to um, the Prophet peace be upon him, said, Woe to you, for Muhammad has never told a lie. That's what he said to him. And on the day of Badr, he, Abu Jahl shouted out across the, across the battlefield and he said, Oh Muhammad, we do not consider you a liar. Abu Sufyan, yeah, I know. Yeah, no. I brought that up in my thing as well. Abu, so, uh, sorry. So because... Let me, let me finish, let me finish. But that, again... Let me finish. All right. Let me finish. He shouted across the field and he said, Oh Muhammad, we do not consider you a liar, but we deny what you have brought. And this and that is revealed in, uh, and there's an ayah revealed, chapter 6, verse 33, mm -hmm. based on that inter very interaction. So the, for you to come here and say that Muhammad, peace be upon him, a liar, those who knew him, 
and even fought against him did not make such a claim. Yeah, but you're preaching it because one, people did accuse him of stealing. Um, I, I need to remember the story, but there were people that accused him of, uh, I can't remember what it was. They accused uh, him of gay things. Gay things. They accused him of exactly. Many so you're saying you're, took them all back. you're you. Well, who was it? Who, the story where they accused. What was it? They accused Mohammed of stealing. Uh, was it? Was it underwear or something? I can't remember. Or if you can, yeah. If you can check. He's not a liar. So, so he's just going to have a check. But again, that's why I just started with, off with that hadith because we're diverting off that. I'm saying we have a clear piece of evidence that which I'm bringing to you. That's not an evidence, which still your you're, misunderstanding. But the thing is, you're saying I'm misunderstanding the actions. The actions of the Sahaba clearly demonstrate that they did not bring no, 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 a, a scribe. Let's focus. Now you're talking about the, uh, disobeying the Prophet. That's a completely different No, 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 no. Because yeah. no. you're saying the meaning, because I'm my claim is he, he was either make, telling the truth or lying in that particular statement. What was he you're lying saying about? about being able to write. Right, you're was? saying I misunderstood it because it means he should get a scribe. But I'm saying that's not an answer because that is an answer. it's not a sufficient answer because I'm saying his his Sahaba would have clearly brought a, who were scribes amongst them would have just said because they would have heard revelation. I, I, I Wait, let me that. just finish. No, but I they would have heard. Yeah, let me just I'll bring up your point as well. They would have heard him recite many revelations before or give many commands before. So they would have known instantly when he says that, that a scribe should come and take note of what he's going to say. They argued amongst them. And your reasoning is that because he was ill, therefore they were justified or had a reason, whether it's justified or not, to then not um, stress him out and let him relax. <coughs> what's, this, what's, what's the inverted commas about? Because I'm because saying- Because in the hadith, they didn't want to okay, cause him distress. So it, the hadith says they differed, right? Yeah, they differed. So why yeah? did they differ? Because some of them wanted uh, wanted it to happen, some of them uh, didn't. So were the ones okay. who wanted him to do it, were they in the correct? What do you call it? We don't know what the Prophet just upon him was going to... Uh... Exactly. That's my whole point. Okay, so... so why would you... If he's saying, I will give you something that will not lead you astray, so you know the context, this is your... I would have... And this is what caused a disagreement, because it would seem that the people who wanted him to write were in the correct, government of Aisha. Okay, um, yeah, so let me just finish. So it seems like the pe the Sahaba that disagreed to say he should write were in the correct Look, be because they opposed the people. Paper let me just let me finish by They opposed the people because we agree there was a split between the Sahaba. So therefore the ones who disagreed to say he shouldn't okay. were clearly in the wrong because there was a reason why and a justified reason why the Sahaba who wanted him to write wanted him to write and they were in the correct paper boy the thing is i'm going to tell you this because mm. we've got a history and everything i'm going to be honest with you mm. stop doing this for the camera no but i stop doing it for the camera it's not for the camera exactly, and i'll tell you why it's exactly for no the camera. i'll tell you no 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 i'll, I'll tell you why it's I'll not for the, camera. for the camera right because i made the argument i articulated my argument i gave right. you the reason and then you went back and explained the whole conversation why would you do that i i know what the conversation is i'm standing here having that conversation so for you to do that to do that whole monologue of re uh, uh, recapping mm -hmm. the entire argument on both mm -hmm. sides, that's for the camera. No, uh, I'm not you, having a conversation. No, I'll tell you why. No, you're not engaging with me. Because if you engage with me, you would understand. I was engaging. The five points. No, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you why I was engaging. Because this, when I recap, I, sa I said specifically, do you, where the Sahaba who were in favor, I added an extra, an extra point. No, no, no. Because, what, yes, because the reason why I'm trying to get clarification to say, okay, no, well, that's I'm your explanation. No, so, yeah, but I'm, I wasn't I'm just repeating, I added another caveat yeah, to it to you say. About it, cause I can say it yeah, because you're, what you're no, saying no, no. doesn't make sense. No, no, no. You don't know. You yeah, that's why I'm asking for clarification. No, I, I gave you the clarification. Yeah, but I'm saying. And you ignored it. No, but I'm saying because the context, I'm disagreeing because of the context. So, I'm saying, well, if there was a split, why would they split? No. And who was in the, the right and who was in the, the wrong? The Sahaba had differences of opinion. Right. Not on just that occasion, yeah, and, on many occasions. Yeah, which gives. Okay. So that's, that all feeds into my question. No, no, that's got nothing to do with the with this aspect of was the Prophet Sallallahu able to write or not? That's got nothing to do with it. That now is a different question altogether. So the fact that you're bringing that up as part of the argument shows that you don't even know what you're arguing. That's no, what, what I'm saying no, no, very you clear. You're of course, because I do. no, you don't. And people because, can can see. See again, you're appealing to them. I'm no, but you, I'm just saying because I'm I feel you. like you're trying to respond in a way no, no. that makes it seem like I'm no. not engaging or I'm trying to be 
um, I up, can up, tell, up I can tell when people do things for the camera. No, I because the reason why okay. you made I'm I'm responding because you made the challenge that Mohammed was either deceived he was he no, deceived. I asked you what do you think? Yeah. I'll tell you. I asked right. you what you think. You said you thought he lied. And then you brought this hadith as up, an example. As an yeah. example. And I showed you that A, you're reading it in English. Mm. B, you don't know Arabic, so you can't read the Arabic. Mm. Three, you don't know the uh, the language of the Arabs in the seventh century and how they articulated themselves in the seventh century. Uh, I forgot what the fourth point was. Um, oh yeah, the, uh, no, I forgot what the fourth point was that I mentioned. But uh, and the fifth point I mentioned was uh, the example of Abu Jahl. The the people that actually knew him didn't even make such a claim that he was a liar. They rejected what he brought, but they didn't accuse him of lying. Right? They would say that he would borrow it. They would say asatir wal awwalin that they was well, these were the fables of the of the ancients, they mm -hmm. would make those claims, they would say that he was uh, crazy, they would say that he was possessed, mm -hmm. that the Quran was magic, they would make these claims, but they never accused him of lying, which is very interesting. So that, for you to come here, yeah, and this and this incident, but, and this incident, do you not think, do you not think that when the Quran says that the Prophet was um, illiterate, mm -hmm. yeah, Ummi, um, that when he suddenly, when he suddenly says, oh, bring me something to write, yeah, what, this, this, this one, uh, oh, okay, go on. And when they bring, leave that, leave that for now. Let's bring yeah, it to yeah. him in a bit. Let me finish my point. Mm -hmm. So, do you not think mm -hmm. that when the Quran says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Ummi, an illiterate man, and then suddenly among his companions he says, "Bring me some write paper. I'm going to write something," and they understand it that way. Do you not think they will start to question the revelation? Of course they would. Well, if they, if, yeah, they, they would. if they had always known that he was illiterate, they wouldn't have questioned the revelation. No, but then he suddenly, then he suddenly says, I'm because that's, thing. Yeah, but that's an, interpre no, that's, a, that's an interpretation. Evidence. No, this is actually evidence that they understood that he's not going to, that he's not where, going to write Where did anything. Muhammad say he was illiterate? Okay. It's directly. in the Quran. Okay. What's the quote? Because it also, it also calls other, other religious groups illiterate as well. Okay, chapter 7, verse 157. Yeah, go on. Hudaybiyah uh, hadith Ali radiallahu anhu show me where he showed me. Yeah, but I'm not talking about the min al Quran. Yeah, but I'll tell you min al Quran. Yeah, go on. Yeah, chapter seven, verse one fifty seven. If I've if I've got the reference Hudaybiyah, correct. Hudaybiyah. Yeah, Hudaybiyah as well. Yeah. And even even what, the letter to Her Heraclius, the, the letter to uh, Nagashi. What did, what did Nagashi, they say? Okay. What None of these were, well, what do you call it, written by the Prophet, peace be upon him. You can read okay? the letter And the thing Heraclius is, what's interesting, in the, letter, the letter to Heraclius, it starts off by saying, from, the, from uh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the messenger of God. So the, the letter is saying it's from the Prophet, peace be upon him, but he never penned it. Okay. okay? So what, the reason what's, why he had why a you... ring, yeah, mm -hmm. to seal the letters is to show it's from him, mm -hmm. so that uh, the scribes, right, after they would scribe it, he would seal it. Okay, Let, let's Put go into another topic. For example, he needs another. He needs another topic. For example, anyway. no, because you you said I'm stick. I, I don't need to stick on that one point about the about the writing. The 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 the, the night journey. What about it? was that bodily? Yes. So we had Aisha, who said that his. She, his body never went anywhere in the hadith. Yeah. So my question is, yeah. and this is some why. Hadith. So some no. some hadith. So again, so we have, for example. Oh, I don't want you to misquote the hadith. Cite it. That, oh, you want me to cite it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah.